Hello, I'm Dr. Margaret Willenberg, and my latest book, Pandemic Anxiety, Fear, Stress, and Loss in Traumatic Times, just came out a couple of weeks ago. And it seems to me pretty timely because there are all kinds of reasons why the stresses of the pandemic in the difficult year of 2020 are still with us and likely to be for some time. But I wanna to talk to you about one particular aspect of pandemic anxiety that's really relevant right now, which is vaccine anxiety. And I wanna give you an example of one useful technique. <clears throat> it's called worry well and only once. As I have been talking to clients getting ready to get vaccines, what comes up is what if I have a reaction? And here's where we can use the technique worry well and only once. In this technique, you get everything you're worried about right out on the table, rational, irrational, get it all laid out and then decide what is worth worrying about, what do you know enough about already, and then you make a plan and you follow your plan. So let me give you an example. Uh, let's say that you are a worrier about whether or not you have a reaction to the vaccine. And what you're worried about is, what if I'm the person, uh, one in a million who has a severe allergic reaction to it? Well, let's talk about that. What do you know about the likelihood? Well, it's possible, but it isn't probable. Okay, it's possible, so what worries you about it? Well, with my luck, I'll be the one who starts to have a severe allergic reaction. Okay, what do you know about what can protect you? Well, apparently you have to sit and wait 15 minutes, but what are they going to do? Well, you need information. In this case, I happen to know, but I would urge you to discover that there is a medical person supervising that 15 minutes, or at least somebody who's capable of dealing with an allergic reaction. So there will be somebody there who can deal with an allergic reaction. And another thing to think about, uh, as one person said, yeah, but what if mine isn't 15 minutes? What if mine comes on in half an hour? Okay, what are your options? And uh, this is a person who knows that if she doesn't have a really careful plan, she might well end up having a panic attack, which would then feel like heart palpitations and maybe an, a reaction. So what she thought about was, well, I need to be near somebody who could help me if I were in trouble. And what she decided is when she was released from her 15 minutes, she would drive over to a nearby hospital, which is only a couple of minutes away and sit in the parking lot near the emergency department so that if she started to have a more serious reaction, she could then go in. Well, what are you going to do while you're waiting? Here's part of the plan. Well, I don't want her to sit and go, is my heart beating too fast? And, and focus on her body. So what she decided is she would um, take along something that uh, she could listen to that would be entertaining on her phone. And uh, if she was feeling a little bit too anxious, she would have a guided meditation that she would listen to. We also made sure that if she felt a little panicky, we practiced breathing so that she knew how to calm herself down with breathing. So now she's kind of set. She knows that somebody there can take care of her if she has an immediate reaction and that that's only possible, it's not probable. It's probably even remotely possible, not probable. So what she will say to herself coming up to the vaccine is, it's extremely unlikely that I will have a negative reaction. And an even better thing to say would be to say it completely positively. It's extremely likely that I will be just fine. And to stay calm, I plan to breathe. I plan to do a guided meditation if I find myself nervous while I'm waiting to go in for my vaccine. And I will trust that somebody will be watching me for 15 minutes. In case I have an immediate reaction, they know what to do. And because I'm afraid I'm gonna be very nervous and will talk myself into uh, panicking, when I am released, I'm going to drive over to the nearby hospital where I will sit in the parking lot outside the emergency department. If I'm relaxed enough, I will read a book or watch something on my phone. And if I'm feeling nervous, I'm going to do a guided meditation until one hour following my injection is up. And she said then, so that's a plan. That's what we're going to do that day. Yeah, but what if I, what if I start to feel bad hours later? 
Well, here's a question. Do you believe that if you were short of breath or your heart were pounding in a serious way where you literally couldn't breathe, that you would notice it? She said, well, of course I would notice it. Okay, do you believe that if you were covered in a rash from head to toe, you would notice it? Of course I would notice it. So you don't have to look for it. That's a key point. You don't have to look for the symptom. You will not fail to observe it. What do you know about typical reactions? I know my arm will be sore. I might very well the next day feel fluish, achy or headachy or whatever. Okay, are those life-threatening? No, they're not. They're quite uh, typical. Not by any means everybody has that reaction, but many do. Okay, so after that first hour, at what point will you give yourself permission to just say, yeah, I'm fine. I'm not going to have a serious reaction. 24 hours, 48 hours, pick a time. And then between the injection and that time, 24, 48, 72 hours, you decide not to think about it. If you start to feel like, oh, I'm a little headache, you say, stop, 24 hours. And I will reevaluate at 24 hours and maybe give myself another 24 hours. But the idea is in the meantime, you don't dwell on it. So you give yourself an evaluation point. So I just wanna say those are the steps of worry well and only once. And the idea here is to turn off the ruminative worrying mind so it doesn't start creating uh, vague symptoms for you. And the belief that if you have a serious symptom, you will not fail to notice it and you have a plan. You know the, num the 911, you know to call a hospital, you have the number for uh, adverse reaction reporting after you are successfully treated. Whatever it is that you need, you put it in place. And then every time it comes up, oh no, what if I have the reaction? You go stop. 24 hours, 72 hours, whatever your point is. I hope that this seems pretty clear to you. There's certainly a section in my book about it. There's also a section on worry well and only once in my book, The 10 Best Ever Anxiety Management Technique. So I hope that you will take it to heart that you can do well with this. I hope that you succeed in having a worry-free vaccine.